Grace to you and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for this morning is the Holy Gospel that was just read from John chapter 6. There's a difference between what we need in life and what we want in life. Our needs and our wants may not always be the same. So a need is something of necessity. It's something that we cannot do without. We need food, clothing, a home, welfare. We need the forgiveness of sins. A want, on the other hand, is something of luxury. We, it's something that we necessarily don't need, but it would be nice to have. Most of the time, that which we want becomes sinfully driven. We will learn today that we not only need daily bread, but we also need Jesus, who is our bread of life. Our text takes place one year before our Lord's death. It makes reference to the Passover. And so it's the Passover that's one year before Good Friday. So there's a, a large crowd on the way to attend the Passover in Jerusalem. They heard uh, that Jesus was nearby, so they, they traveled to visit him. They wanted to follow Jesus because of the miracles that he was doing. So they were wanting to see Jesus. They were wanting to follow Jesus for the wrong reasons. Merely because he was doing signs, miracles. Why are you here this morning? Do you think that Christianity will make you healthy, wealthy, and wise? Are you here bec uh, because of selfish reasons? Or are you here because you truly need the forgiveness of sins? What did the people in the wilderness need? They needed food. They were hungry. And it was getting late. And there was no, they were, they were hungry. So Jesus said to Philip, where shall we buy bread that these may eat? Now, Philip could have said something like this. Why, Lord, you just performed many miracles in Galilee. You healed a centurion's uh, son. You healed the man at the, uh, at the pool of Bethsaida. I believe that you can supply enough food to provide for these over 5,000 people. But Philip didn't say this. Philip concluded that since they do not have enough money to feed all these people, that the situation is hopeless. And we would have said the same thing. Well, what about you? How much money do you need to solve all of your problems? Will, say, $200,000 uh, be good enough? Do you need more or do you need less? Will money satisfy all of your wants and desires? Isaiah 55 asks the question, why do you spend money for what is not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy? And Jesus says, do not labor for the food which perishes. Philip thought that the situation was hopeless. Huh. I mean, this boy's got some uh, bread and some fish, but it's hopeless. It's a hopeless situation. There's no way there's not enough food from this little boy's lunch that could feed the whole crowd. And we would have said the same thing. Andrew could have said, why, Lord, you are the Son of God. You are the source of life, and you sustain life. You are able to satisfy the hunger and the needs of these people by performing a miracle. But Andrew did not say this. And he failed to see Jesus as a source of life. He failed to see Jesus as the source of our bread of life. And we are no different. What did the over 5,000 people need? They needed food. They were hungry. And Jesus 
performed a wonderful miracle. The little boy's lunch of bread and fish, Jesus multiplied so that everyone had enough to eat with leftovers at that. It was a wonderful miracle. And after multiplying enough bread and fish for everyone, there were some that wanted to make Jesus take him by force and make him into a king, a bread king, a political bread king. They thought, why with power like this, Jesus would be able to overcome the Romans. He would be able to restore the glory of Israel like back in, like in Solomon's time. Come, let's make him king. But this is not why Jesus came into our world. They were more concerned about earthly bread, which spoils, rather than Jesus, who is their bread of life. And what they wanted was not what they needed. Dearly beloved in the Lord, we should not see Jesus as a political savior who will free America from all of her social ills. We should not see Jesus only in earthly social terms. We should not see Jesus merely as someone who will bless us materially. Do not work for earthly bread alone, which perishes. Do not grumble and complain against the Lord when you don't get the things that you want. The devil wants to draw you away from Christ and into a self-centered life that neither cares for God or the neighbor. And the devil wants you to leave the freedom that you have in Christ and to join his side where you will be in slavery of sin. The world sets before your eyes a wonderful banquet filled with possessions and income and honor and intelligence and accomplishments. And it may look good on the outside, but inside, this temptation is filled with deception, lies, sin, and eternal death. What do we need? Yes, we need food and clothing, house and home, and the list goes on and on. And for us, God is the giver of all good gifts. He is gracious to us. All that we have is from his hand, and we should acknowledge that and give him thanks. Psalm 145 identifies God as the one who gives his people meat in due season. He's the one that opens his hand and he satisfies our desires, the very thing that we need. What do we need? We need a savior from sin. We need the forgiveness of sins. How much will this cost? Will 200 denarii be sufficient for our salvation? No. Is gold or silver sufficient to pay for our salvation? No. Our good works, will they be sufficient for our salvation? No. Are we in a hopeless situation regarding our salvation in and of ourselves? Yes. Are we totally dependent upon God for our salvation? Yes. Again, how much will our salvation cost? It cost Jesus his sacrificial death upon the cross. And there on the cross, he earned salvation for us, not with gold or silver, but it was with his holy precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death. For it's there in the cross that he, he was the perfect Lamb of God that offered the sacrifice for the sin of the whole world. He bore the wrath of God in our place, and because of that cross, we are reconciled with God through faith in Christ alone. You were baptized into the death and resurrection of Christ. In your baptism, you were washed and regenerated and given a new life. You are clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness. And in, in baptism, you, were, you drowned that old Adam and out came the righteousness of a new life in Christ. And every time we confess our sins and hear that absolution, we are drowning that old Adam again and again. And we are hearing anew 
the forgiveness of all our sins on account of Christ alone. Moses delivered his people from the bondage of Egypt, but Jesus delivered us from the bondage of sin and death. Moses freed the Israelites from Pharaoh, but Jesus freed us from Satan and eternal damnation. Moses was a servant of God, but Jesus is God in the flesh, our very bread of life. God used Moses to feed the people with manna and quail, but Jesus himself is our bread for eternal life. The bread in the wilderness was free. God gave the children of Israel manna and quail every morning without payment on their return. And even though they complained, and the bread which Jesus fed, he fed to the over 4,000 people, even though Peter and, and, and Philip and Andrew did not get it. And even though there were some there that wanted to make Jesus into a bread king, Jesus still fed them all totally free, apart from any of their works. And so also for us, salvation is free, apart from any works in us, apart from anything that we do, from any merit or worthiness on our part. For God gives salvation purely by grace through faith in Christ alone. And faith receives this wonderful salvation and responds to God with thanksgiving and praise. Andrew asked the question, there was a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fish, but what are they among so many? And someone this morning could ask, at this table there is a little wafer and a small amount of wine, but what, what good are they? How can these elements help my soul or give me e eternal blessings? Doubt not, but believe in Jesus' simple words, that it is his body and his blood given for you for the forgiveness of all your sin. Today our Lord prepares a table before you, spread with heavenly food, you may eat a small piece of bread, a wafer, along with our Lord's body, and you may take a sip from the cup, which is our, also our Lord's blood. And this meal will satisfy your hunger and thirst for righteousness. There is always more and more of this bread of life to be given out. We will never run out. Our Lord's gifts to us Sunday after Sunday are limitless, and they are eternal. Our sinful flesh may not want Jesus, but Jesus is the one who we desperately need. Bread for our body is important, but bread for our soul is absolutely necessary. Earthly bread costs money. We work for it by the sweat of our brow, but our heavenly bread in Jesus is Free. Daily bread is temporary, but in Christ, he, God satisfies our hunger and thirst for righteousness permanently, and Christ provides bread that will last forever. So what do we need? Yes, we need daily bread and food and clothing, but we also need the forgiveness of sins. We need Jesus, our bread of life. God not only provides for our body, but he also provides for our soul. May we get all glory and honor be given to God alone. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus and the life everlasting. Amen.